Hello everyone, this video is about biological oxidation and electron transport chain. The concept of this topic is how energy is produced in our body. To understand this mechanism, let us consider a simple example. The fuel that we use in our car has chemical energy. So when this fuel is burned in the car engine, chemical energy of fuel is transformed into heat and that is transformed again into mechanical energy. So, the energy of fuel is extracted by burning in that vehicle engine. Let us compare this with the energy produced in our body from the food that we take daily which contains carbohydrate, protein or fats. So, there is some amount of energy in these nutrients. The energy of these nutrients in their simple forms, so that is the simple form of carbohydrates is glucose, the simple form of fats is fatty acid and the simple form of proteins is amino acid. So, this glucose, fatty acids and amino acids, they have energy and that energy is extracted by burning these simple units inside the cell by a mechanism called as oxidation. So, after oxidation, the energy which is released during that oxidation process is used for the synthesis of ATP in the electron transport chain. Before going into details of what is the meaning of biological oxidation electron transport chain, let us consider how much amount of energy is required. That is how much amount of ATP is required for a person per day for some activities. A sedentary male of 70 kg requires 2000 kilocalories per day approximately. So, to provide this much of energy that is to provide 2000 kilocalories per day, 83 kg of ATP is required. Human beings have only 250 grams of ATP at any moment. But the activities like running, it requires when a person runs for 2 hours, he requires 60 kg of ATP. Even though a person is taking rest, he requires 40 kg of ATP and our heart requires 6 kg of ATP per day. So, there is a large difference between the ATP we have, we have only 250 grams of ATP and the amount of ATP required for various activities. So, how this difference is compensated? To understand this, we should know what is biological oxidation and oxidative phosphorylation. Biological oxidation is, it is the transfer of electrons from the reduced coenzymes through the respiratory chain or electron transport chain to oxygen is biological oxidation. We will see uh, here what are the source of electrons, what is reduced coenzyme and what is respiratory chain or electron transport chain. Now coming to the meaning of oxidative phosphorylation, energy released during the transfer of electrons is used for the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. So this mechanism is called as the oxidative phosphorylation. So this oxidative phosphorylation is a coupled process which involves oxidation and phosphorylation. So, oxidation in some simple terms is it is transfer of electrons through the electron transport chain and phosphorylation is when you join inorganic phosphate to ADP, it results in the synthesis of ATP. So, that is called as the phosphorylation. Now, coming to how the difference between the amount of ATP that is required and the amount of ATP that we have in our body is compensated and this is compensated by recycling the ADP back to ATP. So, generally one ATP produced in a cell is consumed within a minute. So, when ATP is utilized, it is converted into ADP. This ADP is reconverted to ATP. So, each ATP molecule is recycled approximately 300 times per day. So, the energy required for the synthesis of ATP is obtained from the electrons which are released during the catabolism of the fuel molecules. So, the recycling takes place through oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation is possible only when there is electron transfer in the electron transport chain and proton gradient. And electrons are obtained from the foods that we take like carbohydrates, fats by three stages. Stage 1 that is digestion where larger molecules are converted into smaller molecules that is carbohydrates, fats and proteins. They are converted into glucose, fatty acids and amino acids. Stage 2, these small molecules, they are degraded into simple units. That is again glucose, fatty acids and amino acids 
they are converted into acetyl CoA. So during this conversion, during this degradation, some ATP is released and most of the energy is extracted in the form of NADH and FADH2. So this NADH and FADH2 are the reduced coenzymes. Coming to stage 3, the acetyl CoA which is formed in the stage 2, it is completely oxidized in the TCA cycle. Due to this complete oxidation of acetyl CoA, acetyl CoA is converted into carbon dioxide and the energy of acetyl CoA is extracted in the form of electrons and that is carried in the form of NADH and FADH2. Now these two that is NADH and FADH2 transfer the electrons to electron transport chain. So these electrons which are transferred now into the electron transport chain, they release the energy which is used to create the proton gradient. So we'll discuss about what is proton gradient in detail in the coming videos. The energy of this proton gradient is used for the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. That means here ADP and inorganic phosphate are joined. So some amount of energy is required to join these two and that energy is provided by this proton gradient. Now coming to the importance of dehydrogenases in the biological oxidation. When a dehydrogenase acts on substrate, it removes the two hydrogens. So each hydrogen is equal to one proton and one electron. So when two hydrogens are removed, so two protons and two electrons are released from the substrate. So these electrons, they are passed to the electron transport chain and in the electron transport chain, when they move from the complex one to the complex four, the energy is released and that energy is used to pump the protons which creates the proton gradient. So that means, so during the transfer of electrons, electrons will lose the energy and finally they will combine with oxygen to form water. Now coming to what is electron transport chain? The flow of electrons takes place in four large protein complexes present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Together these protein complexes are called as respiratory chain or electron transport chain. 